Today I have another quilt for you that I am quilting out, which I am super happy since one of my goals this year is to quilt half, if not more, of the quilt tops I have stashed away in my closet. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, thread choices, as always. Before I think of anything else, I normally start with thread choices, but sometimes when you do see a quilt, you know right away what color thread you'll be using. And in today, that is the case. I will be using Glide in Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe is one of my top five favorite color of threads. I rarely get to use it since I don't make a lot of quilts that can kind of use an orange thread color so when the opportunity does come I will take it but you can use any color from this quilt the pink the light blue green etc but if you don't want to single a color out for your thread then you can always go with like a light gray and that will blend in with everything for this example I will also be using the purple air and water soluble marker from Dritz. You can also use a chalk pencil or chalk markers if you prefer, but please be sure to test whatever you are planning on marking out with your quilt on the side before you start drawing, just in case you have a dud marker or something, or it, it doesn't do what it's supposed to say. So always t check and test on the side. Now, if you do not want to mark on your quilt or a customer's quilt, even with a marker that is air and water soluble, or even the chalk markers, you can instead get a plexiglass and kind of use like a dry erase marker on the plexiglass. So you just lay the plexiglass on top of the quilt and then you draw on the plexiglass. Whew. Now I don't have one of those at this moment, but I do plan on getting that in the future. But anyways, let's start talking about the quilting. First, I look at the pattern. This is a simple geometric block shape, nothing too fancy, which then I'll start looking at the fabrics. The fabrics are also simple, kind of like simple blenders, but there are flowers, micro dots, leaves, etc. Now you may think, wow, I really have no idea what to quilt since everything is simple and nothing too fancy. Nothing is really screaming out at you on quilt this. But in actuality, this quilt is a perfect blank canvas. You can just about get away with anything that you would like to be quilting. Now since this is my quilt and since I want to practice some more skills, I do want to perfect one of them, which are swirls. Now I also really enjoyed the quarter inch echo around the blocks from my last quilt, which was quilting the log cabin quilt. Link for that video will be down below in the description. But since I really like that quarter inch echo, I'm going to repeat the same thing around this block's outer border. Now you can go ahead and fill in with the area whatever you like, but since I want to practice my swirls, I am going to be doing swirls around the whole block. Next, I thought about keeping the two and a half inch squares very simple and just X them out. Lastly, I need to think of what to do in the green strip area, which I'll accentuate the stripes by also creating more horizontal lines and then maybe fill in every other line with pebbles. Now, after I finished drawing it, I ended up totally loving the look of the block. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with quilting it out. For this entire quilt, I will also be stitching in the ditch around each block, which I've already done so. Then next, I will start my quarter inch echo around the outer edge. Then I will tie a knot and break thread, so to speak, to then restart another quarter inch echo around the outer block, but in the more inner port part of the edge. Once I make myself all the way around the block, 
and reach back where I started, I am now just going to bounce out and start practicing my swirls all the way around to fill in the area. Now you can fill it in with whatever you like. I am just doing the swirls to practice as well as eyeball and judge the distance of how many I can fit comfortably within the section. Throughout this quilt, some of the corner swirls tend to get squished, which means I technically didn't judge the distance that great. But like I said, this is something I am trying to practice and work on. Once I start quilting, I tend to get into a rhythm and sometimes get tunnel vision, or I get mesmerized by the quilting. Anyways, but once I make it around, I'll connect the swirls together and tie a knot to once again break thread. I'll then move over to the inner section and start by quilting in the ditch all the way around the block. Once I finished, I am now set up to start my X in the square sections. Now since I ended up on the top of the block, I am just going to stitch in the ditch, heading right to the next square block, and then I'm going to X that one out as well. And once again, I did end up on the top of the block, and I could just repeat and go left to the next square, but in my head, I am now realizing that if I continue this pattern, I will be creating my horizontal stripes in the green area from top to bottom. And I am not 100% comfortable with holding my long arm ruler on the top and measuring down. So instead, I am just going to travel by stitching in the ditch again on the side and then start from my bottom green strip and make my way up to where I left off. Once I have reached up to where I've ended, I will just repeat the same steps. I will start the X in my square sections, and then I will once again be ending up on the top of the block in which I'll just go ahead and stitch in the ditch heading to the right to the next square block, and then I'll X that one out as well. Then I'll just travel on the right edge and then fill in the green areas with the lines. And once you have completed everything, you're just going to tie a knot and break thread. You'll just move over to the next block and repeat. Now, if you are not a fan of breaking thread, you can just create a travel stitch to the next section or however you would like.
Now you may have noticed that from the YouTube thumbnail and also me quilting out the block, I am not adding the pebbles that I originally discussed when I was coming up with how to quilt it. This is because I actually tried it in the first block in the beginning before I started recording and I did not like it. My thread choice, which was Glide and Cantaloupe, was really shining and sparkling through, kind of like gold sparkling in the sun. So when I started the pebble work, it was just too much shine for me. Now, maybe if I had used a light gray thread, it would work out, but this is a great example of how sometimes when we are designing and planning things out, when you get to the actual long arm and start quilting, things may change and that is okay. It is perfectly normal. You can do whatever you are comfortable with and whatever you like or you, what you think looks good. I do hope you have enjoyed this How to Quilt It episode. If you could, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button. Click on the notification bell so you can be notified for your next project. But until then, I will see you next time.